Let's move forward on our show. The Spurs picking up a big win over the Heat Sunday night, partly in thanks to a successful coaches challenge in the fourth quarter. It was interesting to watch because San Antonio assistant coach Becky Hammond motivated Pop to dispute a continuation call on the Jimmy Butler bucket. Uh, first, oh, he sort of waved her, he sort of waved her off at first, then she came at him a second time, and then he finally made the single signal there. Not all challenges have gone swimmingly, so I want to know how you felt because you worked under the system as a head coach. What do you think about the coach's challenge rule? I'm 50-50 I'm on it, um, but I do think that it adds a whole other element to the game for situations like that. You can win a game or lose a game mm -hmm. based on that. Uh, future head coach Becky Hammond came yep. through and, and really won a big game for Pop and those guys. Um, but what I tried to do was I always tried to hold my challenge as, as long as possible for yeah. situations like that. And I even had a coach on the staff that was designated to really lock in on that part of the game and, and give me good feedback on when to challenge and which ones. The hardest part is to pass up on some. Right. When you know, like, oh, that's a bad call. You got to be able to walk away from that sometimes knowing that you may need that thing in the last two minutes of a game. Or you may need the timeout. Or the timeout. Right. Because exactly. a lot of coaches would rather have a timeout where they can get their guys together and drop a play than something that went the other way. Have a challenge where you, you may win the challenge and still not get the ball. Um, and what's, what drove Spo crazy about this play was he felt that it went beyond the 30 seconds. And the other thing is the rules are so new and everybody's still learning about them. And the NBA is still learning how to apply it, and the coaches are still learning their strategy yeah. that it's a bit of a mess at times. It gets, it gets messy. You know, there was just a game between Utah and New Orleans a couple of weeks ago where clearly there was a foul at mm -hmm. the buzzer on Rudy Gobert, but they didn't call the foul. So it's kind of like in, the, in, in, in football. You can't review something that didn't get called right. that doesn't exist. So right. in football, the, the referees learned to let a fumble go and let the team pick it up and run it back for a touchdown, even if it looks clearly that it's not, so that you can possibly that you can review it. Right. The officials haven't learned how to call it yet. It hasn't, you know, but I'm gonna tell you this, no matter what any of the coaches say, and I've done a lot of talking to coaches about this, it's not going away. Adam Silver wants us to be there. If anything, I think it expands. So this is just gonna be part of a longer process. And everyone will adapt. Yeah. Like you said, it, uh, the league will adjust, the officials will adjust, the coaches will get better at it. I'm sure they'll tinker with a few things to make it more, more efficient. Um, but I like I, the one thing I do like about it, it adds a whole nother element to the game that's exciting and could really change the, the view of a game. I love it. I've loved it since they started talking about it. I'm thrilled they put it in. I would like them to actually have a red flag. I would like it to be required uh -huh. to be kept in the sock so that, that we can see all the coaches' socks as they no, have hanky, to like put them hanky, out, hanky. right, or something like Throw that. I do think that it should be <laughs> limited to the fourth quarter because I think that would take some pressure off coaches to use it early. I didn't see any of your players doing this to you. I have seen some especially superstar players in this league feel that they were not given the right call and right. they walk back to the bench doing this. And the dynamic between a big star and his coach is already tenuous enough yeah that's but you know as a coach you got to be able to tell them no we're not pulling that trigger right now unless like th I think that the, the way you really have to protect your players is this foul trouble mm -hmm. and if you can keep a guy from getting to a bad place with foul trouble then you do it early but otherwise sometimes you got to tell your star chill Fizz has no problem standing up to his yes, players I that am. I can verify I'm aware of that we don't have that situation <laughs> everywhere in the NBA thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN+.